Honourable members. Good quality legislations are some of the most important tenets of any modern and civilized democratic society. The process of developing such legislations is as critical as the product. The legislative drafting department under the office of the Attorney General is an integral part of the policy making process. We are responsible for drafting legislation, um, subsidiary legislation. We give advice to ministries, departments and agencies. We advise parliament, we advise the judiciary. And we assist all the other departments in the, in the, in the office of the Attorney General to perform their mandates better. We give legal opinions on what the law means, what the law can do, what it can't do, and when it can be applied. From conceptualization, development, and publication, the whole spectrum of legislative drafting process is systematic and procedural. This is deliberate and has a great impact on the quality of legislation itself. The process of legislation, legislative drafting begins with the client department. So let's say a ministry wants to pass a law to establish a new institution. They will write to us with a request uh, asking us to review the law as it is at that time and whether or not the institution that they wish to establish will fit in within the broader framework of government institutions. Um, tra uh, traditionally, they will send us a draft legal instrument, either a draft bill or a draft set of regulations, which we will review together with the technical officers from the ministry. It usually takes us about 30 days to actually agree on what their instructions actually are. And depending on the complexity of the instrument, it might take another 30 days to finalize. So from the moment a ministry instructs us to the moment we, fi we, we finalize a draft can take, can take two weeks, uh, sorry, two months. Then the next stage is, especially for a bill, the next stage is for the bill to be presented to cabinet for approval. If cabinet approves, then we will transmit it to parliament, then the usual parliamentary process will take place. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Petition regarding illicit assets and bank accounts and laundering of proceeds of crime to tax haven. I, the undersigned. Our primary clients are government, government ministries. They are the, because they are the ones who are responsible for policy, they are the ones who are responsible for implementing legislation, they are the ones who are responsible for enforcing legislation. So when it comes to the preparation of either draft bill or subsidiary legislation, it is the ministries that come to us. Now, on with respect to certain government agencies, or like Kenya Revenue Authority, the Competition Authority, the Communications Authority, the Inspector General of Police. There are certain instruments that they are directly responsible for. So they write to us directly, sometimes without going through their parent ministries. We will prepare the necessary instruments for them, then either their CEOs or the heads of the institutions will sign. Then they'll come back to us and then we will work with the government printer to have them published. So, why is drafting important for government and citizens? If you look at the laws that we passed, let's say up to 1993, they were written in a very complex way. So that as a, as a, a lay person would find it very difficult to read, to read and understand that law. After 2010, because we are also supposed to bring government as close to the people as possible. One of the tools that government uses is legislation. So the laws that we are drafting should be capable of being read by laymen without requiring the services of a lawyer. We will deliver judgment on Friday. One of the, well, one of the strangest things is that the judiciary itself will ask us for advice <laughs> on laws <laughs> because even though their job is to interpret the law and to apply it you will find that sometimes there is a provision in the law for which no no criminal or civil case has been filed 
So they need the AG to interpret it in order to guide them. The drafting process to be a success, it requires enough competent and skilled personnel who will deliver the drafts within the set duration. This therefore demands for the need for constant training and retraining of the personnel in the department to meet the contemporary needs. This, however, takes time to be achieved. Our department has 18 legislative drafters, but it takes a long time for somebody to actually become competent as a drafter. And the, the, the past three or four years we faced a challenge in raising adequate resources for people to actually go for additional training. It is not, so what we, do, what we do as a department is to balance available resources against the available expertise in the department. You'll find that senior, senior and more experienced drafters are mentoring their juniors. We take time to take them through what it means to be a drafter, the skills that they require as drafters, how they can how they can participate at the early stages of policy making and decision making when it comes to legislation in order to come up with effective instruments going forward. The legal drafting department has consistently rolled out quality policies. After the current constitution was promulgated in 2010, the many laws that came through the office of the attorney general and the most notable ones were the ones that are now setting up the new constitutional commissions. We prepared legislation for the Kenya National Human Rights Commission, the Office of the Ombudsman, the National Police Service, even the Kenya Defense Forces, they came up with a new law, which we were the ones who, who implemented. The one that I think is the most recent and most significant was the establishment of the Kenya Coast Guard. We worked hand in hand with both the Ministry of Transport and Ministry of the Interior to prepare a draft bill to actually see it approved by cabinet, to see it processed by parliament, and finally for it to be enacted. When it comes to budgeting, our department assists the Ministry of the, the National Treasury to draft the finance bill. We don't get involved on the appropriation side, but we are definitely a key, a key stakeholder. In the, in the preparation of the finance bill. And the finance bill is the one that determines the level of taxation. So that if we say VAT is going is coming down to 14%, the, the, the language in the bill was drafted by a legislative drafter, somebody from our department. On our members, uh, understanding order number 225, Subsection 2, paragraph B, requires... The political relationship between the Office of the Attorney General and Parliament is underpinned by some of the duties that legal drafters undertake. Working hand in hand, therefore, makes the relationship more profound and fortified. But of utmost importance is to improve the quality of bills that are being developed for the nation. Honorable Senators, Section 7. Parliamentarians can bring private members' bills. Those ones are bills that are proposed or, or sponsored by individual members of parliament and are not necessarily government-sponsored bills. When that happens, we, we've come to an arrangement with parliament that if a member sponsors a bill that is not a government bill, they will ask us for our views. So we usually scrutinize bills that have been sponsored by private members and advise them on constitutionality and how they fit within the overall structure, the overall legislative structure that we have. And every now and then, a private member's bill will actually be adopted by government. I wasn't here when this happened, but the, 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 the one that we keep referring to was the one that established the Co -Co Constituencies Development Fund. It was proposed by a private member, and at that time, government saw it as an effective tool in devolving funds to constituencies. So we adopted it as a government bill. And we've had similar, similar interactions with parliament, especially after 2010. The spirit of the law was definitely addressing a very, very critical social problem. 
the, the sexual offenses bill was a private members bill and it was sponsored by the by, by Angel Kendo. but because it was also going to have a significant effect on on the penal code the, the, this office and and you can do work together to actually make sure that that it was passed to interpret the law with precision and avoiding ambiguity is very important for the government operations it is the duty of the drafter to ensure that the words are not used in the wrong context the, the, if you if you read the newspapers we use the, the, they tend to use two terms interchangeably defilement and rape now as a drafter i know that rape refers to an offense that is committed against a woman who is older than 18 years and i know that defilement is of a woman who, or rather a, a girl who is younger than 18 years if i did not know the distinction if you now read the sexual offenses bill, it would now be using both rape and defilement interchangeably. And that would now have an effect when a person is being prosecuted. Because if you are arrested and charged with rape, the judge knows that rape refers to a person who is 18 and over. And defilement, a person who is younger than 18 years. Now, if I use them interchangeably, the court wouldn't know which sentence to impose. So you need... You, we need to be very precise in how we say what we say and what we mean. Our vision as a department going forward is to become an integral part of policy making. Because you, you, you will notice that when new laws are passed, there is usually an underlying policy behind it, which is meant to guide how that law is force, how it will be implemented, the people it will affect. Um, the, the, the role our department will play will also assist ministries and departments to actually streamline their policies so that if we have, if, if we play a key role in the process, we can advise them at the very beginning so that the, sometimes we are accused of making laws that do not, do, do not serve any purpose that laws that are never enforced. Half the reason that happens is that we were not involved at the policy stage. But going forward, if we if we advise the ministries at, at policy making stage, then we'll be able to identify the gaps in the law, we'll be able to identify the gaps in administration, we'll be able to, to identify the gaps in, in enforcement. So that by the time an instrument comes to us for drafting, Everybody is on the same page. Government as a whole has has, has the same has the same mindset when it comes to that new policy.